In this lesson, we will set up foot controls. All right, so we're ready to go in and start creating control objects. Now, there are a few things you want to keep in mind about the control objects you make. For one, you should make sure that they are as clean as possible, meaning by the end, we should make sure we freeze our transforms so that our rotation and translation channels are zeroed out and our scale is set to one so that we can quickly get back to this bind pose by zeroing out those channels. Another thing to keep in mind is that we should make sure that our controls are easy to select. We don't want animators to have a hard time searching for and, and grabbing our controls. And another thing we can do is make sure that they're easy to discern, meaning that it should be easy to know what that control does and where it belongs. And this is more important for complex animations where our character is moving all over the place. We need to go in and quickly figure out, all right, that's the arm control, so I need to go ahead and start moving that. Specifically, that is the right arm, so I need to move that back over to this side at some point. All right, so let's say we go ahead and create this control now. What I like to do is work with NURBS curves because by default they do not appear in a render. So we'll head over to Create, CV Curve Tool, and we'll grab the Option box. Let's reset our settings. I'll work with a Linear Curve Degree. You can work with a Higher de Curve Degree if you'd like, but I find that Linear works well. So we'll now go ahead and just close out of our tool settings. Now, let's say we go ahead and create a square curve. So we'll just snap to grid. We'll hold down the X key and we'll create a set of five points. All right. So once we've managed to create this shape, we'll now go ahead and center its pivot because as of right now, if we were to grab the move tool, you'll see that the pivot is at the origin once we finish creating this curve. So let's head over to modify and we'll choose center pivot. Now let's start moving this over to the foot. We're going to move this over in the X and Z axes, but we won't move it up in the Y axis. And this is just so that this curve can stay on the floor. So we always have an idea of where the floor is. So whenever the, the character's walking, again, this will make it clear that, hey, the character has finally contacted the floor. So here's what we'll do. We'll go to our model layer. We'll go ahead and hide it. Now let's go ahead and grab the Z axis. And with that selected, we'll hold down the V key and we'll middle mouse button drag around our IK handle so we can snap to that spot. This is where we want to pivot the foot from so that we can avoid a shaky knee. If we pivot from any other point, we might notice that as the ankle rotates, it's going to cause the leg to kind of shift a bit. And again, we'd have to do a lot of counter king to mitigate that shaky behavior. And at best, it will still look shaky. So let's go ahead and avoid that by making sure we pivot from the ankle. So we'll take a look at that soon. We'll now go ahead and grab the X axis. We'll hold down the V key and we'll go ahead and snap. All right, great. So now this is still on the floor and it is aligned to our ankle. Next, let's go ahead and move the pivot to the ankle. So when we start to control the foot, again, we can rotate it from that spot and remove the shaky knee. So what we'll do is go ahead and hold down the D key and we'll hold down the V key and we'll now middle mouse button drag right there on top of our ankle. And there we have it. All right, so from here what I'd like to do is start reshaping this control. Yes, it is easy to select, but right now it's way too large. So it's going to have some fun with this. With the curve selected, we'll press F8 to go into component mode. And now we could start to kind of pull a few points in and we could have it wrap around the foot a bit better. So I'll go ahead and start to grab these points at the back, pull those in a bit more. Great. And then from there, we can go ahead and kind of tweak the other points. What I'll do is cancel out the Y axis by holding down control and clicking on that axis. So now when we grab the center of our manipulator, we're only able to move in the X and Z. So I find that to be very helpful at times. And there we go. We have managed to conform this control to the character's foot. All right, very nice. Let's go ahead and press F8 to go back to object mode and take a look at our control. Fun stuff. Now we want it to point forward. We don't want it to follow the slant of the foot. 
And this is so that we can easily go in and animate a walk or a run. With the foot slanted, when we start to rotate, it would rotate and, and move at that slant. So we want to prevent that from happening. Now, speaking of rotation, we'll get into learning more about our rotate order to make sure that when we do rotate, we can avoid gimbal lock as much as possible. All right, so this is actually going to work out to be pretty good for us. So from here, let's say we go in and rename this control. That's going to be Adam L leg 01. All right, sweet. Now, remember, we want to make sure that this is cleaned up. Right now, we have some values here in our translate channels. So, again, the idea behind this is when we zero out these channels, we need to get back to our skin pose, and that's not the case. You can see how it's moved that control. So I'll go ahead and undo that back. How do we clean this up? Simple. With the control selected, we just head over to Modify and choose Freeze Transformations. Great. So all of that information has been zeroed out. Great. And this is our new origin point. So again, when we go ahead and zero this out, we get back to this exact pose. Great. Let's say we go ahead and work on mirroring this across. I'll show you a trick that we can use for mirroring our controls. And in the Transforming Robot Rigging series, we actually learn how to create a tool that goes through the same steps, but much faster at a click of a button. All right, so what I'll go ahead and do is duplicate this object, Control D. And now let's go ahead and press Control G to create a group with the pivot right here at our origin. So this is the plane that we mirror across. So from here, all we need to do is go to our skill X. This is the X axis we'd like to mirror across. And we'll set that to negative 1. And there we go. Our control has been mirrored. So from here, we want to ungroup this object. We'll head back over to Edit. And we'll choose Ungroup. And now, we'll go ahead and freeze this down. You can see we have some values here to clean up. So we'll just head over to Modify. Freeze transformations. Beautiful. So now it's a matter of going in and renaming this object. That's going to be anim r leg 01. All right, sweet. So our controls are easy to select and they are also cleaned up. But are they easy to discern? Kind of, because you can look at the shape and say, hey, this obviously belongs on the right side and this on the left side, but they're the same color right now. So what we can do is go in and color code these so that we know for certain that, hey, this is the right side and this is the left. So what I like to do is use blue for the left and red for the right. So since we have the control on the right selected, let's go ahead and press Control A to move over to our attribute editor. From there, we can go ahead and find our object display. Let's expand that to get to drawing overrides and we'll enable overrides. So now we can choose whatever color we want. Again, we're using red for the right side. So we're going to find pure red. There it is. Now when we deselect, you can see that we have color coded that object. Let's go ahead and take care of the one on the left half. So again, we have chosen blue for this one. So with it selected, we'll go ahead and enable overrides, and we'll find blue. It should be before red. There it is. And there we have it. So now it's very clear that, hey, this is the control on the left side, and this is the one on the right. Whenever you're choosing a color, stay consistent so you don't confuse your animators. All right, now what I'd like to do is go ahead and make sure that we can get control back over all axes. Right now, the Y axis is still locked. So I'll just go ahead and control click in the center of our manipulator to, again, give us control back over every axis. All right, sweet. So it's now time to grab both control objects and create a group. We'll press Control G. And here's our controls group. So we'll go to name this Controls 01. We'll get rid of our Translate, Rotate, and Scale channels. We'll right click and choose Lock and Hide Selected. And now we can have this stored in our global group. So we'll go to grab controls and store our controls group there. Now, from here, we can actually go ahead and take our reverse chains and parent those to our new controls. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll grab the reverse toe, and we'll parent to 
our control object. Sweet. So watch this. When we grab the control object, take a look. When we start to rotate, you can see how we get no shifting in the leg, which is nice. And watch. When we start to move this, now we're able to move the leg around. How cool. It's a very efficient control. Now watch this. If I were to take this pivot point with the control selected, if I were to press insert on the keyboard, or we could use the D key to go into pivot mode, but if I were to go ahead and move this just slightly off, and now start to rotate, you'll notice that we get some shifting in the leg, and this is what we're trying to avoid. All right, great. So I'll make sure we undo that back so that's not an issue anymore. Let's take care of the reverse chain on the left side. So we'll go ahead and grab that joint, shift select the parent object, which is our control, and press the P key. Now we'll test this out. Sweet. Now the last thing we can do to finish off this lesson is to come up with a way of letting animators know that, hey, we're only able to move this control this way and we're not supposed to use it any other way. So take a look at what we have in our channel box. As of right now, you can see that we have, yes, translate and rotate channels visible, but what about scale and visibility? Do they need to be concerned with these channels? Well, not at all because they should only move and rotate these controls, not scale. If you're wanting to scale the character, you do so from the global node. So we'll go ahead and grab both controls, and we'll now highlight our scale and visibility channels. We'll right-click and choose Lock and Hide Selected. So now it's very clear that, hey, we're only able to move and rotate these control objects.